Hello, this is the next part of this video that started with the question or with the sentence we are removing the kettle. So let me get one thing first out of the way. Yes, we are removing the kettle, but that does not mean that there will be a few trucks and they will take away the whole herd at once. That is not our intention. The intention is to make the intention is to make a transition. So right now we have 46 head of cattle. Well, since yesterday we have only 40 because the six that were tuberculosis positive went to the slaughterhouse by um, means of a order from the veterinarians, and you have to comply. And we actually went up very very early and drove two and a half hours so that we can be there at 8 o'clock in the morning and then of course we had to wait and the process took a time and until uh, something around 10 or so we finally got to see the inside of our six animals and all the meat or the beef in that case were deemed ready for human consumption so this is now on sale by means of the very same slaughterhouse. They deliver all around them. This is the civil area, so there are not there are a lot of places where they can sell this. We will later receive a statement from them how much they are going to pay us. So they basically took care of the whole process and we basically get the difference between their sales price subtracted by the cost and what is left that is what we will receive i can actually share the number once i have it probably sometimes next week and we intended to also take out one uh, the remaining bull unfortunately this guy gave us a hard time <laughs> and there were a few things and we will do some analysis what went wrong so we were not able to load them up um, probably the video before this one shows you some of that but again here is a summary uh, so watch that if uh, you haven't done already why we could not load the guy up but um, we will do this a little bit later when there is an opportunity see uh, we will see how it goes so for now he's with the herd and everything is fine the only bad part is we were expecting that meat from this bull for ourselves. So now that did not happen. Doesn't matter. So, but the purpose of this video is now to talk about our poultry idea. And also give you a little update on the rain that we had on Thursday. Today is Saturday and Friday we were at the slaughterhouse. So we got a few downpours quite heavily. And I think somehow I will put the footage of this in here and if you look there you can see that that swale did fill up a little bit you might be able to see it or I will add some details here but it is moist but not filled to the brim it was not enough for that but it was only a few small thunderstorms that provided some moisture and now it is clearing up so the sky is getting blue, the next few days are supposed to be of sunshine, which is very good for the grass, so the grass will now go. So, but this out of the way, let's talk about the poultry idea. So, the idea is to introduce quite a bit of poultry and there's also more things connected to it that are planned. So, let's try to go through this step by step. So first a few things that we are not going to do. So we are not looking to have the traditional laying hen that produces 320 eggs a year on average and maybe lasts because of all the stress some two years and something or where people then remove the hens because their laying productivity has gone down. So this is what we don't intend to do. I fully understand the reasoning behind all this, but this is not our topic. Our topic is soil restoration and we want to make this whole place here green all year round, despite all the challenges. So we do what is good for the soil, 
by means of animals and other measures and if the animals provide us with a product then that's great but we are not looking for high animal productivity there are ways to do this and other people do it and there is conversation and discussion not our topic so we will have a mix a mix of different poultry breeds and species so we will have chicken and that means hens and broilers for eggs and for meat we will have geese for eggs meat and for protection so the plan is to have one flock of hens and then there is one goose in there which will then believe uh, it's a hen and therefore will protect the hens these flocks will be small so maybe only some 50 or maybe 100 hens in combination with a small mobile structure with the nests so the laying boxes so that we have the eggs in all place in one place and we can also provide them some protection overnight so we will build something that is inspired by all the existing egg mobiles and how these uh, structures are called and there will be a battery and a solar panel involved and the door that gets opened and closed by a light sensor stuff like that and also a light on the inside that gets turned on and turned off so that they will definitely enter the structure for the night there will be an electric fence all around and the one goose the guard goose will be with them and will also go inside of course and then the plan is to have one or multiple donkeys on the outside to basically guard the area outside of the electric fence that whole thing will move frequently not daily and basically where the donkey and probably horses have left their manure they declare a corner of our little paddocks target size less than 5000 square meters as their toilet and once that toilet has been filled then the laying hens will move to that area in order to eat the larvae and bugs and whatever is developing because of the manure and they will also scratch it and distribute it and add their own manure and then they move to the next corner and to the next corner and so on in order to do a good job to restoring soil fertility and the broilers where it's about the meat which is basically when an animal hatches from the egg we have a 50 50 chance that is a hen or that is um, a broiler um, so a male chicken um, will come out a rooster if we let it go but unfortunately we won't because um, broilers are roosters that will be slaughtered at a young age before they become a rooster so these we will keep in salatine style chicken tractors and we will move them so for example here on this open flat area they are about two by two meters in size so every day we come here and move a series of them by pulling them on a rope two meters and then another two meters and then another two meters of course I can't show you these things because we haven't built them yet but I show you some pictures what other people have been doing of course it's a Google search so that you can have an impression and some idea what I'm talking about so that is the overview now let's think about why are we doing this so what are the benefits for us so first of all this is good for ourselves so for our families and by families I mean my family and the family of Juan and Angel so they buy eggs and chicken meat in the store once we have our own they won't have to so we will share what we can produce this sets us up for the future when we can actually go to the local market second benefit there is a local market so we talked a little bit to people around to the owners of a few butcher shops 
And what we have learned is that indeed they do sell chicken meat and people do ask it. Because here in this area beef is not what most people are asking for, what they like to eat. So they either prefer the Iberico um, meat, so pork, and of course it's of this special quality that we have around here that is not available elsewhere. Um, the stuff that is being sold in the supermarket and comes from all the other ways of um, keeping and raising um, pigs, they don't like. So this is not sold very frequently. But of course the Iberico is expensive. So therefore they are not buying a lot of it. And in order to compensate they will then buy chicken meat. That is a lot cheaper and uh, you can eat more frequently that. But of course every day they eat some sort of ham or other pieces for the bocadillo, which is a sandwich of tomato and some pork meat in different forms, be it ham or be it loin or something. So it is always in the mix somehow. So they won't go a day by probably where they don't have anything from a pork, uh, from a pig. So, but for us, that means there is a local market. And the first step is, once we have a slaughter facility, next topic then, we will then sell our chicken meat and also the eggs at the same time, because it's a good combination, via the local butchers, who are interested and who buy it and give us the permission to put a banner next to yeah, next to a stand with some eggs in there, where we can explain what that is, why it is so special, what is our project about. So we also want to seize the opportunity to inform the people that we exist and what we do different. This is in order to make them interested, go to our website, which is also available in Spanish. So if your browser speaks Spanish, the website Caimito EU will present the content in Spanish, in German and in English, for everybody else. Um, I should probably add a flag there so that you can switch the language, but for now I detect your language <laughs> and then present it in the right one. So the idea is to inform the public here around about what we do and how we do this and why it is a little bit different and why the quality is different. So information I think is key and that is one way to get the word out because the videos are in English so local people don't watch them and all our visitors and the emails that I get are usually not from people in Spain which is a little bit sad. There are a few. So, si estás viendo eso y eres de España puedes decir hola que la gente vea que tú existes. Much appreciated. Um, so, we want to get the word out. And now I said slaughterhouse, so slaughter facility. So here's one thing, and I really do love the European Union and this whole concept that there is EU law that is above national law. So all the different cultures have their things and their special ways. And here and there, these cultural things and special ways get in the way of development. So for example, here in Spain, if you want to get something moving that is not common, it may take a while. While in other cultures, what is written is what really is and how things are being done. In Spain it might depend. So if you are not well connected, you might get nowhere. Same issue exists in Latin America. I'm not trying to criticize that, but it's a fact that there are differences and so some things may take a very long time, while elsewhere, if the thing that you want to do is logical, has merit, has benefits, they will allow you to do it. While in other places, they won't because they don't feel like it. And you can, nothing, you can do nothing about it. So here comes the point. The European Union has made a direct law that applies to every citizen and institution and therefore also to the authorities. 
That means they have to do what the direct law says or are in violation of a law. The national parliament has nothing to do with that. This is decided on the EU level. And one thing that has been decided on the EU level is that you are allowed, given that you meet certain requirements, there is a list that is non-ambitious, to create, to build and operate a small slaughter facility for poultry and also for animals like um, rabbits, for example. So, there is no way around to not allow you to have such a thing. The small slaughterhouse does not allow you to slaughter any other type of animal, only poultry and rabbits. So that means even if we have such a thing, we still cannot slaughter on site our pigs or bovines, which is why we are removing the cattle because it is so difficult and so expensive and in the end we cannot really play the idea you order everything and when everything has been sold then the animal will be slaughtered and processed. So if we would do this then it means we truck one animal in a large truck four hours all the way to that place where we went yesterday Moron de la Frontera, you can look it up on the map the truck, of course, is a lot slower than a regular car. So, for us it was three hours, for the truck it's probably four. And you can imagine that this costs some money. And if you do this for just one animal, it is quite expensive. And of course it's also not good for the animal. And especially not good when the animal is alone. So as we want to avoid all this, we have an uphill battle to fight in order to get the permit. I know that in Germany this is quite easy and some people have been doing that and their stories show up in their several TV documentaries and on YouTube. But here in Spain there is no local culture, no desire um, to do these things and therefore they do not exist yet. So our strategy here is, as there is a permit, we are allowed to have this given we pass an inspection and the rules for the inspection are clear, there is no way out for the authority to deny us this. We built a slaughterhouse for poultry which consists of one section for all the dirty stuff so that is basically where the killing happens and where the intestines and all the organs and all that gets taken out and then we have the carcass doesn't matter if it's a chicken or a pig or a much larger animal that gets cleaned and then moved through a door to the clean part. The clean card is then where the cuts are made, so basically where the animal gets broken down into all the different pieces. Of course in the case of a chicken that is pretty easy and all you need is a table. While for the others you need some rails up there and the lift you know, and then all these things. So we won't have those in the beginning because it is meant to be for the small animals so that we get the permit. But we will oversize everything so that later on we can then add these things and ask for another inspection and then maybe we achieve what we have been aiming for since the very beginning at the time of the inception of this idea. So it's a long loop but eventually we get there. You have to be very persistent. Things don't fall into your lap without a lot of hardship. And patient is part of that because you want to have this because you have an opportunity there but you can't seize it because you're not allowed and it's a mess. So the idea is we built a small slaughter facility and at the end we then freeze um, the carcass or we yeah, separate the carcass into the wings, into the, all the other pieces and of course the breast for um, those that like to buy this. This is probably the most uh, interesting product. And now we are officially allowed to be a supplier of all the local butchers. So instead 
of buying that from far away. The closest place would be somewhere around Seville. Um, we can be their supplier. And we will definitely not try to charge a high price. The purpose is to get in the game. But then, of course, our quantities will be limited because, first and foremost, it's about restoring the soil. So, here. And, of course, we are only three people. And I basically have to do it on the weekend. <laughs> and during the week, the guys will do this. So there is a limitation. So this will not be hundreds of chicken every week. So we will try this first on a very, very small case for a small scale, just for us, for our families. So probably one chicken tractor and maybe 15, 20, 30 birds in there, plus the hens in the existing coop that we have. And then we built the first mobile, um, yeah, egg mobile, the first um, yeah, mobile laying boxes and shelter. And then, as we learn, we scale this up a little bit while we built that slaughter facility. And once we have the slaughter facility, we are then allowed to actually sell it. So there is enough time for all that. So that is basically the plan. And of course there are a few challenges, so some of you have been asking about this. Avian flu, yeah, it's a big issue, because up there in the sky there is wild birds. And here comes a few details, and that is how I understand this, so I'm not an expert on this. Neither a veterinarian nor do I have access to all the information that might be out there, but as I understand this. So we are in Spain and that means migratory birds from the northern part of Europe come to Spain and then they either stay here or they go towards Africa. Stay there for a while and when in the northern parts it gets warmer they then come back, stay a while here and then continue their journey depending on how the weather develops. So that means those are the ones that may bring in the avian flu. In Spain, there are not that many outbreaks. Probably because they pass through and don't live there for a long time. Might be one reason. Might be that in Spain all the um, birds that we like to monitor are inside and they cannot get in contact with the migratory birds that pass overhead because they are in factory farming facilities. Might be, I don't know. But then if you look at a map of avian flu outbreaks you find this usually in places like the Netherlands, in Germany and in the UK, those places or in Denmark. I'm not sure why. So we can speculate. But in our case um, there are no, no poultry activities here in this area. This area full of oak trees, so this is not a topic here. The topic here is Iberico pigs for the Iberico ham. And of course there's cattle, but the other animals are goats and sheep, that kind of thing. And this is not a poultry area. The poultry areas are elsewhere, and of course they do have that problem here and there. I don't know how big it is. So our plan to mitigate this, and we try to get a benefit out of this as well, is depending on the amount and the size of flocks that we are going to have when we scale this up, for each flock, or for two flocks, depending on the size, we will have a polytunnel. And we also want to have some veggies. And of course then there is the tomatoes. And there is more connected to that, but let's keep this out of this video. So we will have polytunnels for different reasons. And during the winter when the avian flu is an issue, because then those birds are here, um, 
we will be able to keep our laying hands inside of those polytunnels. And we can put these polytunnels um, either next to the compound or, let me move this around a little bit, we can also put them on those berms. So they are made white on purpose. That section that I'm showing you here is probably not that white, but let me move you around. So over there, that section is a lot wider. So there is space to put up such a polytunnel and keep the birds there. So that should be an option for a hundred hens inside of a structure. We will figure this out as we go. So that is our way how we can mitigate the issue. Um, and then of course there is another issue, predators. Either those from the sky or those from the ground. Um, we lost 31 birds when we had them. Um, a few fell prey to our own dogs, but I can blame the hens because the hens were yeah, too much interested in the food that we provide the dogs in their enclosure. So the hens walked there very quickly in order to pick the dog's food and of course the dogs didn't like that. So they either chased them away or what these hens stupidly do, they crouch down and then they stay there and then the dog pets them and eventually that play becomes serious and the tail of the hen is then missing. They have not eaten them completely, they just have bitten them and of course that was enough to kill the bird. Um, so, then there are foxes around, there is the Iberico or Iberian lynx and probably some others. Um, this area does not have any wolves but they might show up also at some point. So there are those and then of course the ones from the sky and there are also many. So these hens need some protection. One protection of course is if you have an egg mobile there is a space underneath and if that structure is wide enough and maybe has a roof that is also overhanging then they can find shelter underneath and then of course there is the um, goose in there, so that should help with some of the predators. And there's a donkey around and there's the electric net, so they should be good at least during the day. So um, I think we can manage to keep the predator pressure at bay and work around that. So those are the two major challenges that I see, predators and avian flu. Everything else, I don't know, we will find out. And yeah, the benefit is first, we have something for ourselves. That way we can also learn and we can also figure out what you can do with the product. So I can see recipes showing up on our website. If you have something interesting, please share. And. Uh, if you have a website with some recipes, I am more than happy to put a link to your website. So all these ideas are greatly welcome and we'll try that to cook ourselves. And yeah, then we will build this um, small slaughterhouse, which is oversized so that it can become the bigger one. And then we finally should be able to get some cash flow when we sell the eggs and when we sell the meat from the chicken. And other things might then also develop. For example, when we have those polytunnels, um, we will grow something there. So when during the winter the hens fertilize the space, of course when spring comes around and we roll it up, so that we adapt to the other temperature or even replace the plastic with a shade close, um, then we can grow vegetables. And of course those vegetables we will probably not ship <laughs> to other places far away, but it's again a product that we can sell locally and here is a little detail. 
a lot of these butchers have a stand in the local market. So in Pozo Blanco, which is the biggest city here in the Valle de los Pedroches, and also in Villanueva de Cordoba, and probably a few more places, I'm pretty sure in Inujosa de Duque, which is further west, there they have this also. They have a market hall, which is run by the um, um, by yeah, by the mayor basically, so by the by the local administration, and you can rent it there. Or butchers have their stand there, and if you collaborate with butchers anyway, well, we can probably also sell some of the vegetables or use these places with the help of the butcher as a pickup point. So people direct order via our website. Everything is paid, and then. On Thursday we are in that village, and on Friday in the other village. And so people come and pick it up. That's an option, if you have a more rounded product portfolio. And there is one thing, and I am interested to hear the comments. Have you guys heard about freeze-drying food? So that's a technique where you freeze something, and then Something happens and it will be dry. So I link to some videos that explain this. But there is a process where you can freeze dry stuff. And that stuff can be either cooked food. So you basically can have such a freeze dryer at home. I think uh, the company Harvest, Harvest Right. They make um, devices they are not so expensive and small, and you can use that at home. So basically, the leftovers you can freeze dry and then put back the moisture in, and you can then eat it. Or, what we can do, and that is the question that I have, this is Andalusia, that means we have a lot of sun. And tomatoes could be a very, very interesting product. Also, the chili experiment from last year, we can step it up and freeze-dry the chili and have all kinds of varieties of chili. So this might be something that makes sense to ship. Because I can tell you the tomatoes that you can find at the supermarket are nothing against the tomatoes that have been in the Andalusian sun. So I'm very, very yeah, happy to share that even in our bad soil, the tomatoes really taste good. Yeah, they, they really taste good. So it might be worthwhile to freeze dry these things and because now the moisture is out, they are extremely light. So shipping is then also not very expensive. And nothing can happen because it is dry, so it won't go bad, even if it takes a week to reach the destination. So we can ship this in a regular pouch. It doesn't matter if something falls on top of it, because nothing can break, nothing can get squeezed. It's almost like powder. So, and then you receive it, and then you pour cold or hot water over it, and it comes back. People have been freeze-drying um, strawberries. And they look the same as fresh strawberries after you have added back the moisture. So it is a very interesting thing, and I'm very interested to hear what you think about this. Of course, this is not for tomorrow, and this is not the next step. There are more things involved, and these machines... Um, are a little bit expensive, so I believe the one for home use is almost 5,000 euros or dollars, and those for commercial use, um, yeah, 12,000, 15,000, and a lot more, depending on the quantity that you want to freeze dry. So this needs to be sorted out, but it's a very interesting thing. So maybe that's an interesting way. So now I will end this here at this point, and Add a few more things via voiceover or in between. Yeah, probably I will add them here because I have been talking. And find a little bit more images that I see. For example, I will show you over there how that swale has filled up and also the one up there where we have the Palovnias. And yeah, and in between I will give you the drawings and other images that I have prepared. So, I will say goodbye at this point, and enjoy the other part. See you!
Thank <laughs> you.